Everyone, welcome to another edition of Founder Wisdom Podcast. Today with us, we have a special guest, Miho Tanaka. She's founder and CEO at Startup Work Inc. in uh, Japan. It's going to be an interesting interview. Miho, can you tell us a bit more about yourself and about your organization? Sure, Charles. Thank you for having me here. So I support international startups to start a business in Japan. And I usually collaborate with city government to actually design the initiative together. So mainly I work around startup visa initiative and also like uh, support soft landing uh, process for these international founders trying to kickstart their startup journey in Japan. So why founders should choose Japan as an incorporation destination? So I think why is market size? Still, Japan has 120 million population. So also, it, once if they tap into Japanese market, and once if they acquire early adapter, it kind of like smooths to penetrate into the like the market. So um, most of the these international startups try to start a business in Japan. I think you need to speak the language to do good business in Japan. Is there an audience that? Uh, speaks only English well not only but speaks English the language of business I I know some founders who only speaks English and still operate a business here but it's always highly recommended to speak Japanese or at least hire a native Japanese speakers that can co communicate with um, like local like people yeah for sure and it's just challenging to see like who would speak Japan, you know, well, Japanese and uh, try to see like if, I mean, I know a bunch of people, oddly enough, um, I've actually had employees uh, that were from France, for example, and that lived in Japan and would run their business from there. So I think they, they've got like a Japanese wives and they, they fully integrated the, the society. I think that was like a thing because Japan was so fascinating and it's still fascinating as a country, technology-wise and culturally-wise. Um, but yet, like, would you also recommend that, for example, some companies that have an international presence incorporate themselves in Japan? I think that would be another use case, right? Mm -hmm. Of course, yeah. So I think I sometimes see stage A, B, um, series of companies are coming to Japan because they have enough cash to at least like survive in Japan for at least for a couple of years and also they can also hire a like country manager. So I think, yeah, um, that's also an option for them to start a business in Japan, I think. Yeah, I can see that too. Um, for example, Stripe uh, could be a good example. Uh, I think they're like series D now or even E. But yeah, I think they, they recently got in uh, Japan. So that's super interesting. Um, me as, and I, I mean, I run a cold email agency and I tried various times to introduce the Japanese market, you know, sending emails in English to get uh, agencies or SaaS operating in Japan. And I never really got responses, you know, and I, I'm getting kind of the, the cold feet in that country. Um, is it fair to say that yeah, like if you don't speak the language uh, or if you send them communication in English, like people just won't be interested. So I think I always recommend all these uh, founders or like those who want to start a business in Japan to find the right person. So I think because of the language barrier, uh, most of them do not reply, I think. And I think still 5% of the Japanese population speak fluent English confidently. So wow. the rest 95% don't want to respond quickly. <laughs> They're a bit scared, I think. But once <laughs> at least you meet with them in person and if they open up the mind, then like I think language doesn't matter so much. And then I think um also I find some people saying Japan to operate a business in Japan, we have to have a social capital, enough network to actually find the right people. So I think that's the necessary thing to start a business here. Yeah, for sure. And how complicated is it to start a business in Japan? Like some countries, they require someone to be present 
Uh, do you actually need to have a, a physical presence in Japan or you can just do the e-registration thing? Great question. So we don't have a kind of e-residency like system yet, but it is possible to open a business without physically staying in Japan. So for example, if a person hires either a lawyer or a scrivener in Japan, then this person can ask this person can act as a uh, proxy and then they can set up the entity for the founder outside of Japan. Okay, and how much does it cost? Uh, is it uh, an expensive and lengthy process? Like how does your company help with that? So Japan is not like Estonia, so it's kind of complicated. And the cost for stock company incorporation is around $2,000. And for limited liability partnership company, it's around $500, $600. So um, also the incorporation process time is two weeks. It's not like one day. Also, there are lots of paperwork associated. So still it takes time and my company sometimes connect with these lawyers that can do all the process for the founders but actually most of the founders can do all the process by themselves we also like have software like in japanese market that can automate most of the incorporation process also most of them are confused about the like chicken egg relationship of all the procedural um all the procedures so i usually like guide them through all the process and depending on the timeline they have like i recommend like which process to take and like how they should proceed including visa procedures incorporation procedures and also tax procedures how's the startup scene in Japan at the moment, I, you know, there's one entrepreneur that I love a lot in Japan. A lot of people hate him and it's Masa-san um, with SoftBank. He's like so impressive, like his grandeur and his vision. One of my favorite entrepreneurs. How's the startup scene in Japan? Because I cannot name like, I mean, he's a VC kind of, right? But I cannot name like um, a startup founder in Japan. So how, how's the startup scene right now? So I think it's gradually finally growing, but I would say the ecosystem is still very immature. So for example, for founders, it's actually hard to find investors in Japan, especially when they get a first round of investment. And as I mentioned, Masayoshi Son, um, he actually invests a lot to abroad. So it's kind of funny when I visited Europe, everybody knew about like Soft Bank Vision Fund and how much they're investing but in japan i feel like um yeah most of the like money is going to europe for different uh, countries and in japan like instead of like only investing the money i think they kind of um, accumulate all these startups under their company and it's gonna it's getting it's getting kind of like a conglomerate like yeah. they have all the amazing services and systems under their companies. I think uh, Maza Sun invested a lot like back in the days in telecoms in Japan, but I think his edge was international. The fact that he looked everywhere um, mm -hmm. to get his deals, just like I do. That's why outreach in Japan, but I got the, the cold shoulder uh, so far. I'll keep trying, but uh, interesting, yeah, because I don't think he invested much in um, startups in Japan. And another question for you, I mean, you're a startup founder and a CEO. How has it been to run your own company since the past three years? Uh, it's been like up and down as most of the entrepreneurs go through. So, um, yeah, <laughs> it's fun. And I like working with these passionate founders who like never gives up and like who always like find a motivation to move forward. And actually like they help me going forward as well. When I face some like difficulties, like I just like look at them and like they're facing more challenges and I have to just go. So I, yeah, there are lots of uh, obstacles sometimes, but 
I enjoy at the same time. Yeah. Um, one thing with Japanese culture, for sure, uh, that I can note is bravery um, and never surrender type of attitude. It's And obviously, there's a bunch of other things like Kaizen, which is uh, so Japanese, you know, like always get better and is one of my top 10 philosophy. So I guess that's in your blend. Um, you've helped 1,500 founders so far to start businesses in Japan. If I would like to, for example, hire you to incorporate my uh, company in Japan and, and you know, one day if I speak the language with the, the chip that I'm going to plug in my brain and speak a bunch of language, how much would it cost and what would you exactly do for me to incorporate this company? Hmm. So depending on like how complicated your company is, but usually um, I think like not only me, but any kinds of scriveners usually take about um, $800 to $1,000 on top of all the incorporation fee or government fee. So that's the average cost. Some people ask a lot and like if people find out that like that, Mm. some people ask a lot uh, of money but like I think uh, usually like up to thousand dollars for the simple incorporation is the right amount to pay for and what uh what do you like what do you do uh exactly like do you take the process from a to z um and how long does it take to get my business incorporated? Like walk us through the, the whole process. So if you do not need to think about the visa process and then it's gonna take about a month to fully incorporate a company. But if you also want to incorporate or if you want to open a corporate bank account and that completely depends on bank side. And it sometimes takes like at least a month or even like two months, three months to open the first bank account for especially international people. So uh, it's going to take longer. And if they want to think about the visa process, then um, I would say it's going to take about a half year, like six months to actually finalize all the procedures, I think. Well, yeah. Okay. That's, that's pretty cool. Um, Last but not least, what do you have to say with businesses like uh, Stripe Atlas or, for example, Awesome in uh, Singapore? Uh, would you like to bring your business to that stage, kind of satisfy it if you want? Yes, of course. Yeah, especially if they have like enough like resources, then I think that's going to be much easier to tap into the Japanese market. And yeah, actually... I see they hire Japanese country manager and from the with the small Japanese team they actually scale very fast. So yeah, I want to see these companies coming to Japanese market. Very cool. Well, Miho, thank you so much for the interview today. Where can people find out more about you and your company? I am always on LinkedIn. So uh, yeah, please find me on LinkedIn, Miho Tanaka. All right. Thank you so much.